All right, so looking at uh, number one here. So I've got potassium and it's reacting with water, written as an ionic compound, hydrogen hydroxide. Okay, what kind of reaction am I looking at there? Single replacement, Single replacement right, because I've got a metal or an element reacting with an ionic compound. Okay, so in that case then, the metal, the element, has got to replace the part of the ionic compound that it's like, so it's going to swap out for hydrogen. So that's going to mean hydrogen's going to wind up by itself, and potassium is going to wind up with hydroxide. Okay, single replacement reactions are the ones we have to check the most things on. We made a, a lone element here. Is that lone element special? Yes. Yes, hydrogen is a two when it's by itself. So I've got to write that. So now I've checked my special elements. And is KOH dropped and swapped correctly? Yeah. Yes, it is. Because potassium is a plus one, okay? And hydroxide is a minus one, okay? So when they drop and swap, okay, they end up like this. All right, now what do I do? Balance the whole reaction, yeah. On this side, there are two hydrogens, but over here, there's only one. So I'm going to put a two here, which is going to give me two hydroxides. So that's going to mean I need a two here to give me two hydroxides. That also gives me two potassiums. So I got to go back over here and put a two in front of the potassium. Okay, everybody, all right with that one? How did you get the two hydrogens? Uh, only because I know that it's special. It's on our list of special elements, right? So hydrogen's the only one over on this side that's special, and then there's the the seven here, okay. and those two. Yeah. Okay, uh, for number two, I've got uh, copper and sulfur together. I've got sodium and hydroxide together. They're both ionic compounds. So what kind of reaction am I looking at? Double replacement in this case. Okay, the pattern for double replacement is that I swap the metals, right? So that means that sodium is going to wind up with sulfur and copper is going to wind up with hydroxide, okay? Now, I've made two new ionic compounds, so I have to make sure they're dropped and swapped. Sodium's a minus two, or sorry, sulfur's a minus two. Sodium's a plus one, okay? So Na2S for that one. And then I got a problem with that. What do I not know about copper? The charge. I don't know its charge. It can be a one or a two plus. So I gotta go back over here and figure out what charge it had over here. Sulfur is a minus two, okay? So that means I've gotta get two positive charges out of these two coppers, which means each copper must have a charge of one. Okay, so when I go back over here, I can say, okay, copper is a plus one, hydroxide's a minus one, and I can leave that like that, or I can put brackets around, it doesn't really matter. Okay, everybody all right with that one? Okay, all right, um, so if I'm looking at that now, I've got everything dropped and swapped correctly, there's no special elements, so now I've got to uh, balance the whole reaction. Um, right now, copper and sodium are both out of balance, so I've got to go over here and put a two in front of this to make sure that my sodium's balanced, okay? And then a two in front of that to make sure that my hydroxide's balanced, and then it looks like everything else is okay. Right. Okay. Now, number three, and I'm going to go over number three here just because we just did one that had a special or had a multivalent metal. This one also has a multivalent metal, but I'm going to treat it differently than I did copper in the last one. Okay. So first off, what kind of reaction am I looking at here in number three? Synthesis. Synthesis. Two elements are reacting. Okay. When they go together, I'm going to get a single compound. And it's an ionic compound, all right? So I'm going to need to drop and swap it. Problem is, same as the last one, I don't know what the charge on iron is. But here's the difference. In the last reaction, I could go back, find copper as part of a compound, and figure out what its charge is. Here I can't do that. Iron is an element in this reaction. It doesn't have a charge right now. Elements don't have charges. Okay, so what I've got to do is I've got to go over to the periodic table, since I can't do any math to figure it out, and I've got to look at the order in which iron's charges are listed. Okay, because there's no way for me to figure out which charge it is, I go with the most common charge, which is the one that's listed on the left. Okay, that would be 
three plus. All right, so that's the way I treat it if it's an element to start with. So now that I know that this iron is the three plus iron and sulfur is a minus two, I drop and swap. Whoop, why did I put sulfur there? That was dumb. Let's try that again. That should be oxygen. Everything else can still stay there. Okay, Fe2O3. All right, um, now that I've done that, I need to balance the whole reaction, agreed? Okay, so three is the biggest number, it's on oxygen. There's only two oxygen on this side, so the lowest common multiple would be? Six. six. Okay, so I'm gonna put three times two is six, two times three is six. When I do that, it gives me four iron, so I gotta put a four in front of that, okay? How many people have done number four? Okay, and five? All right, I'm going to give you guys a couple more minutes to get, to get caught up with me, and then we'll look at those two. Okay, so on number four here, okay, we have uh, nitrogen or trinitrogen monophosphide would actually be the name of that compound. Since it's the only reactant, what kind of reaction am I looking at? Synthesis. Decomposition. decomposition, right. Okay. All right, so in this one here, okay, it's going to decompose down into the two things that make it up. That would be nitrogen and phosphorus. What do I always have to be on the lookout for in a decomp reaction? Special elements, because I could produce one or two okay, in here. Um, is nitrogen special? Yes. Comes as a? Okay, what about phosphorus? As a four, right. Okay, so now that I've got those two, I've checked the box for that. There's nothing to drop and swap in this reaction. So now I've got to look at balancing the whole thing. Four is the biggest number, so I'll start with that by putting a four here, which is going to give me 12 nitrogens. Six times two is 12. Okay, questions on that one? Okay, and then our last one here, I've got calcium fluoride and manganese nitride as my two compounds, both ionic, so this is what kind of reaction? Double, Double replacement. Okay, pattern for that is swap the metals. Okay, so on this side here, manganese is gonna wind up with fluorine and calcium is going to end up with nitrogen. Okay, does manganese have more than one possible charge? Yes, it can be a two or a four, I believe, or three and a four, or something like two and a four, I think. Okay, um, so what I've got to do is figure out which charge does it have. I can do that because it's in a compound on the reactant side. So I look to my non-metal, nitrogen is always a minus three, and there are four nitrogens, for a total of 12 negative charges. Since ionic compounds have to have an overall charge of zero, there have to be 12 positive charges coming out of these three manganese atoms. So 12 divided by 3 tells me that each manganese has a charge of 4 plus. Now I can drop and swap this compound, Mn4 plus, F1 minus. Okay, so when I drop and swap, I'm going to get MnF4. Okay, and then I've got to drop and swap the calcium and nitrogen. This is a minus 3, this is a plus 2, so Ca3N2. All right. Now I need to balance. Biggest number is four on both fluorine and nitrogen. Which one should I balance first? Nitrogen. nitrogen has the bigger charge. That's the tiebreaker. Okay, so I got four nitrogens on this side. I only have two over here, so I need to put a two in front of this. That'll give me six calcium. So I'm gonna go back over here and actually put a six in front of this to give me six calcium. That's gonna give me 12 fluorines. So I need to put a three in front of this, and nice. Fixes the manganese on the other side, and now the reaction is balanced. Probably about as tricky as a double replacement reaction gets. Okay, all right, how are we feeling about that kind? Okay, so that kind, three mark question, because you don't have to write out the reactants that are already done for you. Okay, the next five, are the kind that are going to be worth four marks because for them you actually have to write out the reactants as well okay so i'll give you a few minutes on those and then we'll go through them together okay guys let's have a look at uh, at least six and seven here so i got lithium bromide 
Okay, so ionic compound, Li with Br, that's a minus one and that's a plus one, so that one's fine the way I have it written. Reacts with phosphorus. What do I have to remember about phosphorus? It's special. It's special. That's the things that people forget when it's in word form. Okay, they forget to check for these little things like special elements. All right, what kind of reaction am I looking at with an ionic compound and an element? Okay, so in a single replacement reaction, I'm going to swap the, non, the, the element, which in this case is a non-metal, for the non-metal in the ionic compound. So that means that bromine is going to wind up by itself, and lithium is going to wind up with phosphorus. Okay, so in that reaction now, okay, what do I have to check for? I got to check for special elements. Do I have any products that are special? Yes. Okay, which one? Bromine. Okay, so bromine is a special element. It needs a two. Do I need to drop and swap this? Yes. Yes. Okay, phosphorus is a minus three. Lithium is a plus one. So we're looking at Li3P. Okay, so now that I've got that, now I can balance the whole reaction. Four is the biggest number, so I'll start with that. I got four phosphorus, so I'm going to put a four in front of this to make four phosphorus. That gives me 12 lithium. So I got to go back over here and put 12 in front of that. That gives me 12 bromine. 6 times 2 is 12. Now the whole thing should be balanced. Okay. Whenever we have phosphorus and sulfur, we get big numbers for our coefficients. Okay. Number 7. C9H20 reacts with oxygen. So C9H20 plus... Whoa. But I make that look like it's small. 20, okay, plus oxygen. What do I have to remember about oxygen? It's special. Okay, again, something that's easy to forget when you're going from words to formula. What kind of reaction is that? It's a combustion reaction. This time I said reacts with and not burns. When I read burns, it's a dead giveaway. Okay, so if I say reacts with, people get a little more lost sometimes. What are always the products of a combustion reaction? CO2 and CO2 and water. All right, there's no ionic compounds, nothing to drop and swap. No special elements, done that. Now I gotta balance the reaction. Do I need both combustion balancing rules? Okay, I just need to balance alphabetically. Okay, because nine is an odd number. So nine carbons, nine carbons. 20 hydrogens, 10 times two is 20. Okay, and then uh, I've got to do my oxygen. So 9 times 2 is 18, plus 10 more is 28. 14 times 2 is 28. Okay, all right, how many people have done number 8? Okay, I'm going to give you a few more minutes here, okay, and then we'll go through 8, 9, and 10, and then I'll give you a little break. Okay, so for number eight, I've got cesium, okay, so CS, and it is reacting with sulfur. What do I have to remember about sulfur? Special, special element, the most specialist of the specials, okay, S8. What kind of reaction starts with two elements? Synthesis reaction, okay, so when these two go together, they're going to make an ionic compound, okay, CS with S. Uh, I'm going to have to drop and swap that. Cesium is a plus one, sulfur is a minus two, so CS2S would be my um, correct drop and swap on that one. And now I've got to balance the whole reaction. Eight's the biggest number, so an eight goes there, and a 16 would go over here. Okay. All right, number nine, I've got zinc oxide. Okay, um, ionic compound, okay, minus two, plus two, is that one okay? And it's reacting with rubidium chloride, so that would be RBCl, that's a minus one, that's a plus one, so I'm pretty sure, yeah, so that one's good as well. What kind of reaction are we looking at? Okay, so we got double replacement. Okay, so we got to swap the metals in a double replacement reaction, so that means that uh, rubidium, winds up with oxygen, and zinc ends up with chlorine. 
All right, they're obviously both ionic compounds. This is a minus two, that's a plus one, so it would be RB2O, okay? This is a plus two, this is a minus one, so we'll be looking at ZNCl2, okay? And we need to uh, now balance that whole reaction, and I think a two in front of that takes care of the whole thing. All right, and then last one. Iodine reacts with magnesium. Is iodine a special element? Yeah. Okay. Reacts with magnesium. What am I doing in this reaction? Okay, it's a synthesis reaction. What am I doing in this synthesis reaction? Combining a metal and a non-metal with me being a jerk and writing it out of order in the hopes that maybe I'll catch a few people and help they'll write the ionic compound out of order. Okay, it's going to make an ionic compound where magnesium has to be written first, iodine has to be written second. Okay, that's that one trick. In fact, it was on your quiz on Thursday. Okay. Um, so, we've got to drop and swap this ionic compound, that's a minus one, this is a plus two, so MgI2, alright, that's balanced, so is the reaction. Okay, alright, I'm going to give you about five minutes here, okay, take a little break within the classroom, answer all the pressing snaps you have, okay, and then we'll look at uh, some other ones here. Thank okay, you guys for you to try, okay, these are all in word form. See how you guys do with those. Okay, so we have done question number one. This has got to be like the tenth or twelfth time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we got C two dicarbon hexahydride H six burns in oxygen gas. What do I have to remember about oxygen gas? Special O two. Okay. Um, what are always the products of a combustion reaction? CO2 and water. Right. All right, so there's my products, okay? There are no ionic compounds, so there's no dropping and swapping. I already did the one special element, so we're good. When I'm balancing this, do I need to start with a two? I do, because two is an even number, right? Okay, so two times two is four, so I've got to put a four here, okay? Two times six is 12. So 6 times 2 is 12, and then I've got 4 times 2 is 8, plus 6 more is 14 oxygens. 7 times 2 should give me 14. Okay, questions on that one? All right, for number 2, I've got sodium nitrate. So Na with NO3. Okay, since that's an ionic compound, that's a minus 1. That's a plus one, so that compound is fine the way I have it written. Reacts with magnesium, Mg. Okay, that's just an element. Is it special? It's not. Okay, what kind of reaction am I looking at? Single replacement. I have an element reacting with an ionic compound. All right, in this case, the element is a metal. So it's got to swap out the part of the ionic compound it's like. That's the metal. So that means that sodium winds up by itself and magnesium ends up with nitrate. Okay, um, is sodium special? No, okay, do I have to drop and swap magnesium nitrate? Okay, so this is a two plus, okay, this is a one minus, so I drop and swap to get that. Okay, does it matter if I write the magnesium nitrate first and the sodium second? Makes no difference at all. Okay. Um, now I've got to balance that reaction. Right now, the nitrates are out of balance, so I need to put a 2 here, and by putting a 2 there, I'll need to put a 2 in front of the sodium as well. Now it should be balanced. Okay, questions on 2? Okay. Question number 3, I've got magnesium nitride breaking down. Alright, so I've got magnesium with nitrogen, ionic or molecular. Ionic. Do I need to drop and swap it? Yeah. All right. So this is a minus three. This is a plus two. So Mg3N2. And it says it breaks down. 
That means it's not reacting with anything. It is decomposing, right? Okay, so it's a decomposition reaction, which means it's going to break down into its two elements, magnesium, special or not? Not. Okay, nitrogen, special or not? Yes. Okay, so right now then, um, the nitrogens are already balanced, but the magnesiums are not. But now they are. Okay. All right, I'll give you a couple more minutes uh, to try four and five. And actually, I'll put a couple more up here for those of you that are done uh, to number five. Okay, so for number four here, we got sodium permanganate. So that's Na with MnO4. Okay, this is a minus one and that's a plus one, ionic compound, so that's fine. Okay, reacts with iron two sulfide. All right, so iron with the two plus charge, which is sulfur, which is a minus two. So that compound is fine. All right, what kind of reaction am I looking at? Double replacement. So in the double replacement reaction, they'll simply swap the metals. Okay, so iron will end up with permanganate, and sodium will end up with sulfur. All right, so I just made two new ionic compounds. Both need to be dropped and swapped. Agreed? Okay, so what's the charge on iron? Two plus, because they told me that right here. If it's a two plus in the reactants, it's a two plus in the products. A reaction does not change the charge on a multivalent metal. Okay, whatever it starts as, it finishes as. All right, so this is a two plus, okay? This is a one minus, so that's gonna need brackets around it with a two outside, okay? And then this is a plus one, this is a minus two, so we're gonna have Na2S. Okay, now I've got a uh, balance the whole reaction. Two is the biggest number, and if I go back over here and put a two there, that balances the whole reaction. Okay, everybody all right with that one? Okay. Now, number five has got another one of these little things that we have to be mindful of. Okay, it says copper reacts with fluorine gas. Do we have any special elements there? Which one? Fluorine. Comes as a Okay, what kind of reaction are we looking at? Synthesis. Synthesis. Okay, we've got two elements. When I put these together, I get an ionic compound. But copper has more than one possible charge. And since it's not in a compound in the reactants, there's no way for me to calculate what its charge is. So instead, I have to go to my periodic table and look at which of its charges is listed first, two plus. Okay, so that's the one I go with because I have no other way to do it. Okay, I have to assume it has the most common charge, two plus. So I go two plus here, one minus there, CuF2. Okay, and oh, that's nice. It's already balanced. Okay. All right, how many people have done number six? Okay, let's have a look at number six as well here. Okay, so hydrogen sulfate. Now this one can be tricky because hydrogen is listed first in this compound, which means it's behaving as a metal. All right, so that means it's gonna have a positive one charge. Sulfate is a minus two charge, H2SO4, and it's reacting with magnesium hydroxide. Now, this is something I warned you guys about, okay, but it always happens. Um, hydroxide is the one polyatomic ion that people forget to put water around. Brackets, okay? More, so often I see like a two here and no brackets, which is not magnesium hydroxide, okay? So I've got to put brackets around this when I drop and swap and the two goes outside of the brackets. Okay, what kind of reaction are we looking at? Isn't hydrogen sulfate a polyatomic ion? Yep. Why is, like on my sheet, it says there isn't a two. The sulfate is a minus two. The charge on it is minus two. Like it says hydrogen sulfate is at HSO4. Oh. Right, okay, hydrogen sulfate is also a polyatomic ion. This is hydrogen sulfate, the compound. Oh, okay. okay, yes, you're absolutely right. This here is, is different. 
Yeah, hydrogen sulfate as the ion can only be in another compound. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sorry, that's, yeah, you're absolutely right. That can be confusing. Okay, um, so for this one here, we got a double replacement reaction. Hydrogen's acting as the metal here, so we've got to swap it with magnesium, which means magnesium winds up with sulfate, okay, and hydrogen ends up with hydroxide. Okay, everybody with me there? Okay, do I need to do anything with those two compounds? Well, I have to drop and swap them, but it actually works out that they're fine the way I wrote them. Okay, um, This is a plus 2, this is a minus 2, so that compound's fine. This is a plus 1, this is a minus 1, so that compound's also fine. Okay, Now I've got to balance the whole reaction. Right now, hydrogen and hydroxide are both 2s on the reactant side, so putting a 2 in front of this actually makes them work out okay on that side. Questions on that one? All right, number seven, tetraphosphorus. How many phosphorus is that? Four. Four. Question number Okay. Um, pentaoxide, how many oxygens is that? Penta means five. Okay, breaks down. So what kind of reaction are we looking at? Decomposition. Decomposition. All right, so I'm going to get phosphorus and oxygen. Are they special? Yes, both of them are, okay, but not in the same way. Oxygen is two special, phosphorus is four special. All right, anything to drop and swap? Nothing here, okay. Now I've got to balance the whole reaction. Five is the largest number. Five on one side, two on the other. Lowest common multiple is 10. So five times two is 10. Two times five is 10. Two times four phosphorus. Two times four phosphorus. And now we're good. Okay, how are we feeling about these word ones? Because they're a bit trickier. Okay, tomorrow's quiz is going to have some of each. Okay, um, I believe I put some of each on there. I have to double check. Um, but your quiz will post today at 3.20 with the solutions video. So um, I would say make sure you check that out tonight. And let's say let's finish off with the last three here. And then we'll call it a day. All right, so we got tin reacting with beryllium nitride. So that would be BE with N. Okay, is tin special? It's not a special element. It has more than one charge, but it's not a special element. Okay, and then we've got beryllium with nitrogen. This is a minus 3, and this is a plus 2. So BE3, N2 for that one. What kind of reaction am I looking at? Single replacement. All right, so since tin is a metal, it's going to swap out the beryllium, so beryllium is going to end up by itself, and tin is going to wind up with nitrogen. Now, do I know what the charge on tin is in this reaction? No. So I have to go with the most common charge, which is 4. Okay, I have to look it up and see. All right, so on this one here then, tin is a plus 4, nitrogen is a minus 3, SN3, N4. All right, so now that I'm looking at that, now uh, I don't have any special elements, so I need to balance. 4 is my biggest number, so I'll do that first. I'll put a 2 here, because 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, 2 times 3 is 6 beryllium's, 6 beryllium there, 3 tin, 3 tin, and it should be good now. Okay. Uh, number nine, sodium bromide. So NaBr, that's a minus one, that's a plus one, so that's good. Reacts with lead four sulfide. So Pb plus four sulfide minus two. What do we have to be mindful of here? When I drop and swap, I'm going to get two and four. Do I leave it that way? I have to reduce down to the lowest terms, which will be 1 and 2. Okay? That's an easy thing for people to forget on a quiz or a test. Okay? All right, now that I've got that, I'm looking at a double replacement reaction. So I've got to swap my metals. So that means that Pb is going to end up with bromine. Okay? Sodium is going to end up with sulfur. 
and I've got two new compounds to drop and swap. Lead was a four plus on this side, so it's still a four plus on this side. That's gonna give me PdBr4. Sodium's a plus one, sulfur's a minus two, so we got Na2S there. All right, four is our biggest number, so we'll balance it first. Four there balances the bromines. Four sulfur, or sorry, so four sodium. Four sodium, two sulfur, two sulfur, one lead, one lead, or good. And then our last one, sulfur reacts with calcium. All right, what do I have to be aware of? Special element, sulfur is an eight. What else do I have to be aware of? What kind of compound is this going to make? Ionic. Calcium first. Sulfur second, minus two, plus two, so that compound is fine the way I have it written, but I need to balance like so. Okay, lots of little tricks that we have to be mindful of, okay? That comes from doing lots of them, okay? The more you practice, the better it these you will get. Um, so, watch for the quiz to post. I have it scheduled to post at 3.20 today. Make sure you try it tonight and be ready to go for the quiz tomorrow, okay? Make sure you get your lab reports done as well.